development and talking to the people who live there, uh, there is expectation these lakes will stay there for another couple of years, which is huge public health problem, uh, agricultural problem, infrastructural problem, uh, for example, schools, hospitals, um, mosques. Yeah, you can imagine whatever. Uh, everything is destroyed and for a couple of years because this water won't recede uh there is no chance to actually to rebuild it um so a lot of people have a start to ask themselves a question what can be done to rebuild pakistan after the flood this is a basaf san who is a director in institute of for policy studies and they are mainly focused on climate justice so he just simply says if there are resources and will to do it, um, there is a chance to rebuild the country and there is a many way to do it. Uh, international development, that's one of thing traditional, traditionally used. Um, another thing is foregoing public uh, debt of, of Pakistan, just simply doing a haircut, because uh, Pakistan could just simply yeah, default on paying uh, debt to IMF, whoever, and the private uh, lenders. And that's a huge conversation about recovering country in a better way. So those resources should be used to make the country a little bit greener place and safe for environment, which is a little bit ironic because Pakistan was destroyed by the flood caused by the climate change. So those two researchers, I really recommend this short article, which give a references to pick up a lot of things, uh, um, the, the documents, and uh, it's actually calling from Pakistan how to how to develop this country, as recover this country, as a more environmentally friendly. Uh, there is a small conversation about need for reparation, not just charity, so not just international aid. I will f ignore this conversation right now because I come from the country which was never involved in that, Poland, actually, European Union. Uh, but I still think we sh still should do something about that. One of the things is small thing like waiving the tension and the marriage charges in logistics. That's a long shot done by Ministry of um, Maritime Affairs in Pakistan. It's just simply the charges taken by carriers, uh, the um, logistic companies, when the container is in the port and then trucked to the warehouse and then in re return it empty to, to the logistic company. Well, you need to consider that the Pakistan is completely destroyed by by the flood so infrastructure is just a completely broken so profiting from destruction is just simply immoral and it should stop and the european union government should stop doing that the other thing is right now as well um many countries were going to send some international aid to pakistan and because of this destruction those big, huge international logistic companies are going to profit uh, from the, the marriage charges or the tension charges just because the roads are broken. Uh, there are not warehouses to store it. And there may be a problem with just simply uh, um, unloading the truck. So, yeah, that's from the perspective of Pakistan. And as well from the uh, don't like uh, European countries who think about giving international aid to Pakistan humanitarian aid because this the marriage and detention charges will hit organization we, who distribute like Red Cross like I don't know um, Polish humanitarian action um, or many other organizations who just simply distribute aid in those countries. That's a one small thing which European countries can do. Another thing is reliant to huge connection between Pakistan and Russia and exports from Russia to Pakistan. 
Most recently, huge. There was a huge conversation about chances that uh, wheat and grain will be imported by Pakistan to Russia just because of the flood. Um, uh, finally, government said no to that. The uh, Karachi government, Islamabad, sorry. Uh, but it's a huge problem as well because Pakistan is going to probably to trade with Russia and buy oil from Pakistan, from, from Russia. Um, there is a ban on in general on buying oil from Russia because this money are like the money and from selling oil Russia use for invasion in Ukraine, which is another big problem. So big international solidarity problem. On the one side, we have a cu country destroyed by, by flood. On the other side, we have a country which is just simply because of disaster to buy cheaper oil in Russia, which is later used to destroy another country. It's ethically and morally and economically just simply messed up. And we, as um, developed Western countries, we should push the agenda to make sure that Pakistan, uh, as the Paki people in Pakistan as well, uh, want to do, just simply develop uh, as a green and more environmentally friendly country. And that's as well a problem because in next year there is a consideration, at least by Russian uh, sources, that Pakistan is considering paying in rubles. So in general, sanctions says that in sanction introduced by EU and in Japan, Australia, US, that we don't pay, we don't pay uh, Russia in rubles, just simply to make sure that the Russian currency is weak. Okay. The problem is Pakistan, which is uh, in huge economic troubles, probably is considering that, at least UNs. And that's actually part of this discussion, how to deal with that, to, to make sure as well Pakistan is not under sanction, just to um, breaching the sanction, sanction implemented by Western countries uh, because of Russian invasion in Ukraine. And that's huge problem as well so we the there is a huge demand for international solidarity for, between the west and pakistan and other countries like in africa so i really recommend to focus on the couple of small solutions uh, that our countries can do um, to make sure that pakistan it's not draining this the currency foreign currency resources in dollars so they don't have to pay the marriage charges, detention charges, and making sure that Pakistan doesn't have to rely on resources from Russia, for example, or the ter other terrorist countries. Um, and there is as well, last thing I need to mention, so a lot of organizations were banned in Pakistan and that was decision of Pakistan, but it's related to or uh, related to weaponization of international aid by Western countries, and that's particularly, for example, big names save the children. So they have been expelled from Pakistan after killing of Osama bin Laden, who apparently whose hiding place apparently allegedly was given to the American Secret Service by the doctor working for organization Save the Children. Save the Children wasn't as organization was uh, not involved in that. One worker was involved, but was still a huge problem, a diplomatic problem. So we really have to think about that. That's my couple of thoughts. I could talk more about that, how we need how we need to think about international um, solidarity because Pakistan is a huge distribution uh, hub, for example, for Afghanistan, again, country which is really international aid dependent and need our solidarity. So it's not a small problem, something happened in Pakistan and will stay in Pakistan. No, it's a huge international problem. And if we seriously think about being uh, internationalists 
and having morality and being humanist, whatever you call yourself, that's what we have to talk about, consider and solve it. So that's my couple of thoughts. Have a lovely day and catch up soon.